and blast off. Welcome guys. Welcome to the stream. Uh, thank you to Bias. I love it. I love it very much. Um, yes. So welcome. I'm let's see, making sure that you ah, I caught it in time this time. Um, I have YouTube open in a different window and it kind of repeats the audio. So this time I was ready for it. So yo, welcome. Um, hopefully we'll have some people come hang out with us today and, um, I invited some folks, so we'll see if they show up. Let's see. Let's see what we got on the docket today. All right. So today I am working on some revisions. Um, I've been working on my graphic novel called Interstellar, and this is sort of a 30 page teaser trailer, if you will, a little pilot comic. And I'm making some revisions to some of the past pages. So you get to kind of get a little sneak peek behind the curtain to see um, what's going on and what goes on um, in correcting mistakes or learning from new skills I've acquired along the way. So hopefully um, you will enjoy it. Hello, Maria. Thank you so much for joining. Awesome, guys. I'm glad you're here. So it is a lovely blustery Wednesday. Yeah, it is Wednesday. I don't know what day it is anymore, ever. But yep. So this is a page I'm working on. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm checking StreamYard. By the way, if anyone is in the backstage, just um, pop something in the chat and wave me down. Let me know that you're backstage. Um, so yes. So anyways, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop chatting and get to work. Um, I have a little list of things I need to get done here. I have some um, suit adjustments that I have on my character Stella here. So I've been working on her space suit and I've sort of settled on a design that I like. Um, and actually I really like this page. She's kind of throwing out some energy shield or orb. So um, what I am doing down here is I'm changing, I'm adding some more linear elements and uh, fortifying the lines and um, just helping blend it in with the rest of the image, which really is a very strong linear um, comic style. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and delve right in. Delve, dive, words, you know. Sorry if I'm tripping over our words today. I feel like I've been running around and doing different things and suddenly like it's it's stream time. It's time to go. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start and work on her suit a little bit here. Doo -doo -doo. So I got my flats. Oh, awesome. Maria, Maria Rice says that she just found the channel today thanks to Fuzzy's webtoon. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad that you stopped by. And yeah, Fuzzy has some awesome, awesome stuff on webtoons. So he's, he's made some incredible things there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, Oh man, I got to get my art brain on. I feel like I'm everywhere, but in art world right now, I can't get there. Um, let's see, I'll grab a little water. So I'm not sure uh, how acquainted everyone is with art, but what I'm doing here right now is I'm working on my flat slayer and I'm making sure that my um, brush and um, all my eraser tools are all in um, uh, not an alias mode, meaning that it is pixel by pixel. You see that nice clean, clean cut here instead of this blurry edge. And so it's the way you want to work when you're working on your flat layer. And I'm not going to go too deeply into it, but it's just something I got to make sure I do every single time. Um, it took me a while to sort of find a rhythm, but it's really the preferred method for coloring in comics. I mean, you, you can do any, any way to really color comics, but this is kind of a tried and true way of doing that. And I'm going to make sure I select the appropriate um, colors. That's the nice thing about having an alias means that you can 
select things like to the pixel. So there's none of this where it selects partially, get a little of that weird gray white fuzz around it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just hide my lines. So every now and then I have a little shortcut that all I have to do is click a button and it hides lines, but I'm still in that selection. So it doesn't go out into the hair or anything. Um, and it just kind of gets out of the way. So it's nice to not have to be distracted by the marking ants. All right. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna make sure I post my links to the Book of Faces. And let everyone know that we are on, on the air. Perfect. Sounds great. Thanks, Tobias. I appreciate that. Fuzzy got a new job title, professional trombone <laughs> render. Trombo. Oh gosh, I've not actually uh, read his um, uh, comic yet. Does that does a trombo show up? We'll have to check that out. All right, I think that's all the adjustments. I just mostly um, tweaked her suit up there. So now I'm gonna do follow adjacent pixel. It means it only is selects what is bound by pixels of its kind. Yeah, um, Maria, if you're looking to um, up your coloring game, a good person to follow is Oh man, Kurt, the colorist. I'm trying to remember, I think his name is Michael Kurt. Um, let me just quickly check. He's, that's um, whom I started. It's color with Kurt. Here, I'll pop the link into the chat. There you go. Okay, so that's the link if you want to learn some good coloring advice. You might already know of him, but he has some really, really good tips and videos. That's how I really started learning about flatting. Um, and let's see, he commented that he would do anything to get rid of his whole chop tile. <laughs> Professional trombone render, along with other titles that we have learned about Fuzzy. So silly. I don't know. I hope he'll show up today, but he said that he might be taking a bit of a break. So breaks are good. That's the other nice thing about having flats is that um, I had this little area selected, but I didn't want that lighter purple. Um, so I unchecked follow adjacent pixel. And now with my magic wand on the negative setting, I think I'm holding out. I have a little shortcut um, thing here. I can easily deselect and it deselects all of that same pixel. So I don't have to worry about, like you can see how apart from the shades, it's pretty clean even without the lines. There's a little bit of overlap. Um, if some practical reasons for that, I'm probably not the one to tell you all the benefits, but they, they recommend that it's good to not have a lot of that like a little gap of white in between your flats and your other flats because um, if for, if you are offset printing and the lines were shifted a little bit um, because they print in different layers, levels. Oh gosh, don't quote me on that. Basically, it, it helps make sure you don't have any white showing underneath. So that's one of the reasons. There are more reasons than that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put my lines back on. Oh. We can see from here, let's just deselect. Oh, that wasn't right. I get lost without my lines. There we go, okay, so anyways. Okay, I'm gonna reach over to my little palette over here. I'm gonna hide my lines. This kind of helps me see before and after and I like it. All right, so that's actually pretty easy. What I am going back and also doing is I am going to use my other my little in the ink tool. It just kind of has a nice little rough edge and make sure it's on sort of, a, they call it a weak or a gentle alias, anti-alias. 
So this means it has a little bit of fuzzy in line. And I'm going back in and I'm actually outlining all of her little suit details. Oh, I'm gonna put my stabilization up. This is nice because it really helps, um, especially if you're doing like nice smooth lines. If I have my stabilization pretty low, it goes pretty fast. But if I put it up, you can't really see it. You would be able to feel it if you were to draw, but it um, it lags a little bit, but it makes a much smoother line. So especially if you're trying to do like circles and things of the nature, it just straightens it out. So that's with a really big stabilization. If it's a, a low stabilization, it's definitely a lot harder to get a perfect circle, but actually that was pretty good. Um, I, I kind of adjust it as I go. And I like to flip the canvas. That's a great thing. Oh, make sure that now I'm, now I'm doing lines. So I'm gonna go back to alias. Um, yeah, that's a nice thing about Clip Studio is I really like their little feature of flipping the canvas so easily. Let me make sure these suit lines. I wonder, I actually may, I had my suit lines originally. Aha, I did have them and then I decided I didn't want them and now I want them back. So I just can't make up my mind apparently. But I think I will keep these here and I'm just going to add a few more. It's one of the nice things about doing a little um, preview comic, uh, pilot comic, is it's also really allowed me to uh, test around a bunch of different things and styles. And um, honestly, it wasn't until the end of the 35, 30 pages I've been doing, 32, that I just I came across an artist that I was like, that, that right there, that's a style I'm looking for. And it just took seeing what they were doing to realize that that's my forte is really more of a, a strong linear style of drawing and it they were just kind of like yeah they they could get by with you know making a coloring method that um complements their line art and i i just am my happiest drawing and i i realized that's kind of what i wanted and so this artist, his name is Matt Rhodes, and he um, has a really strong linear style. And his he was doing um, a really cool comic called Tellurian. So check it out. Um, Tellurian comic, I think online. I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to look that up. But he did cell shading only, but and did some really good lighting um, with the cell shading. But it kind of simplified it what he was doing and he wasn't fussing with color too much and painting and, you know, trying to get the right stroke. It was, it just simplified things. And I really like that. Um, and I realized I'm like, that's what I want. Oh, and Craig is here. Uh, left in. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. Hey. I can't. Oh, good, good. I see you now. Here you see me? Oh, it's because I do. Perfect. So welcome. How was Thank your you. weekend? It was good. How was your 4th of July? We actually had a really nice and relaxing one. Um, it was just my husband and myself, but we made delicious Worcestershire marinated burgers. We made our own Worcestershire sauce. Nice. Yeah, it was good and just watched some movies and apparently like, the whole neighborhood came out and launched off a barrage of fireworks <laughs> we got this set. what you were saying that you wanted some fireworks but you couldn't get them i think well we we could but it was just us and we're like ah, i don't know if we want to spend a bunch of money just to launch them off just the two of us this year and i mean but you we would just stand on the street corner and you would turn be turning all the time because there's these big fireworks going off all around nice so. It was fun. I was about to ask what you did for the 4th of July weekend. <laughs> I don't think there's probably many fireworks where you're at. No, no fireworks here. Oh, bummer. <laughs> well, I guess that's what TV is for if you ever get the hankering. Mm -hmm. Well, they would yeah. normally do that on July 1st, but it was kind of weird this year, A, because of the circumstances, but B, because it fell on a Wednesday. So. Oh, 
Yeah. 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 That does kind of take the punch out of a holiday when it falls on a Wednesday. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank you very much for the uh, song sample. I really appreciate oh, that. That's no really problem. Cool. No problem. And, and honestly, you know, I was just goofing around with it and I thought, eh, maybe just go like this. But um, yeah, I, I can tweak it and change it a little bit if, it's, if you want something a little different. Well, I will, I will let you know. I'm still kind of figuring out um, the visuals and I really like what Jason has done and what you did for him in the song. Um, I think it's kind of neat to have a little intro there. Mm -hmm. um, I just haven't figured out what, what, what exactly <laughs> that is yet. So at some point I'll get to there, but um, well, no, I, I, I love any space music. So what you sent me was really fun. Well, yeah. And that's the thing. When I did it, I thought this is, this is kind of spacey and you're doing the space angel. And, and, uh, and I thought, you know, that would kind of fit when I, when I listened back to it, I, I thought, I don't know, it kind of sounds a little ominous <laughs> and, and and your stream is more fun and playful so you know <laughs> maybe something a little different would work better i don't know uh i mean it has i like both sides so i have a lot of fun and playful but i like the um i like the sign i don't know how to describe it like i i listen to a lot of orbital i don't know if you're familiar with them and they kind of have some cool spacey tracks and so it kind of reminded me a little bit of that oh cool um so, but yeah, so at some point I, I will be able to practice a little bit because I was like, oh, it'd be really fun to like play with chords of it. And I have always wanted to try that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I could, I'll tell you what I'm using. I just really got it not too long ago because I've always wanted to play around with that kind of stuff. I play guitar, but I just got this little keyboard Oh, cool. And it, it plugs in by USB into your computer. Ooh. And, and that's what I use with Reaper. And it came with a, some software that had like samples of different instruments and things. Um, and I think it was only about 130 bucks. Yeah, that's not bad for um, it, music, you know, equipment, instruments, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just fun to, to play around with. I mean, I'm not a professional <laughs> you know I'm just it's just a hobby it's just for fun so yeah 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 you said you got on amazon um actually i think i did yeah i think i got that on amazon arturia i think is the one that i have now with reaper is that yeah i guess that you probably would want to have something like that um with, with a key yeah yeah with a with a keyboard like that, you want what's called a digital audio workstation, which is what Reaper is. And uh, it, it's very powerful. Like professionals do use it. Um, you can get it for free. And it says it's a 60 day trial, but after the 60 day trial, you can continue to use it as long as you're not using it commercially to sell things, right? Right, okay, yeah, yeah it makes sense. Yeah, but I think, I think actually with the keyboard, I think, there was a, a, a digital workstation that came with it. One of the soft pieces of software was a digital workstation with the keyboard. So, oh, interesting. So, but you didn't try that out. You just did uh, Reaper. No, I just stuck with Reaper. I, I'm I'm a big uh, proponent of uh, like open source and and uh, and low cost uh, software. And and Reaper is one of those pieces of software, like a like a collaboration of people got together and produced something that's quite mm. good. And I like to I like to support that. So I actually ended up paying them for it. I think it was about sixty dollars. It wasn't very much. Uh, yeah. And uh, and I just I just like to support projects like that. Yeah. Especially, I I, I fully agree. Especially when there's you know that the people behind it are actually. Um, making something good a good product mm -hmm. yeah i mean blender's another one that just i i started playing around with blender probably 10 years ago when it was just sort of in its infancy really huh but I didn't realize it, go ahead no it, it just it has come so far and it is it is on par with any 3d software out there nowadays and it's free i did not realize that it was free yeah. completely free and if you if you google sort of blender movies they have 
five or six animated shorts that they've done all using Blender and they're remarkable. Really? Yeah, they're amazing. It's so it's but it's um visual only, it's not audio. Uh bl yeah, Blender's just visual, as far as I know. They may have an audio component. I haven't explored it that far. Um but they they started out as a 3D modeling software. Um right. And, and then they got basically into film production. So it's 3D modeling and animation. Mm -hmm. and, and now they've added a component of 2D animation. I think actually Jason was playing with that a little bit, um, where you can kind of mix 2D and 3D. So you can have a 3D environment, and then you have like a space that you can draw 2D images on that you can move around within the 3D environment. It's, it's kind of neat. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's that's one I'm gonna have to try and try. <laughs> I think I think Mia, Mia uses it a bit, I think. I think you're right. That's right. She's that makes more sense. I do remember her talking about that. Actually it's funny because I am not even sharing my screen right now, but I'm I'm working on um, I'm working on a page where I have an I have a, a an inside environment. Mm -hmm. that I expect to be doing a lot of panels within this environment. Mm -hmm. And I started drawing it, and then I was like, I want to be able to draw this from every possible angle and have it be consistent. So I, I mocked it up in Blender to make just a simple mock-up so I could get my perspective and my objects all in the right space and I could you know shift the angle and all of that and, and it didn't take long but it's really handy for stuff like that. And, and you made that model yourself? Yeah I just put it together myself. I mean basically the model was just it was really simple. Actually I could I could show it to you. Sure yeah, yeah behind the seat. I yeah. I've heard of people doing that especially in you know it's a complex or more complex um, environment that I I need to learn more of that stuff because oh, what was I drawing the other day? I was trying something, uh, and I was just kind of like, oh, well, no, never mind. I was drawing Saturn, but it was just kind of one of those things where, like, if I just had like a three D model, I could just, you know, hash this out really fast. If I had to do this over and over again, I have to do a three D model, otherwise it takes way too long. Yeah. I did the International Space Station without a three D model, though. I just kind of looked at one, and that took. That was fine for a one image. Let's mm -hmm. see. Let me have it out. Let me check. Here we so go. That, oh, that's, cool. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's just like a single room, but my intention is that, uh, you know, I'll be drawing it, you know, from this angle, and then I'll be drawing it from, you know, this angle, and then I'll be drawing it, you know, from this angle. And so having this as a reference is really handy. You know? Yes, and it and it's just it, it's really simple. I mean, I maybe took and I probably took about an hour putting that together. And I mean, I don't have details on any of the things on the walls or anything. It's just so you can get the basic shapes in proportion in the right place. Right. And and uh, even these these blocks here are just representing figures that were in the initial shot. And uh, I mean, I can I can just move them around to a different space if I need to. Um, I can do whatever I need to with it, and and I can, you know, like for this initial shot, I set it up, and then I just render it out into an image. It takes a second. There. So this is the original. This is the initial shot that I had because I wanted this to be looking over the shoulder of one of the characters, and and seeing the bench. And then I'm mm -hmm. going to put some objects and things on the bench. But it, it just makes it so much more convenient to be consistent from one panel and one angle to another. Now, so, yeah. it, you have some lighting in there. Did you determine the light points as well? Yeah. I, uh, I, well, I started out just originally putting, there's a light right here with like a fixture. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't have a ceiling on it because it just makes it easier for me. Sure. But, but I dropped all these little dots. I don't know if you can see them all that Oh, well. I can. Yeah. Yeah. These little orange dots here are lights. They're light sources. And, and you have complete control over how bright or dark they are, what kind of light sources they are. It can be like a spotlight. In this case, it's just an area light that's just lighting up the area. And um, 
I mean, when you've got five different light sources in a room, you end up with some interesting shadow effects, which I'm not sure I would try to reproduce drawing, but mm -hmm. it's, it's neat to have it there as a reference. A absolutely. Yeah. Well, and it gives you ideas that, uh, especially for lighting, that you may not have considered in the first place. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's with any, I've heard a lot of artists that build models. Um, when, so another question, is this the only program that you've used for uh, 3D modeling or have you sort of, uh, have you used anything else and would you recommend this over any other program? I've used SketchUp before, but it felt a little clunky. Maybe that's just me not knowing how to use it. I tried SketchUp. I also found it felt a little clunky. Um, <clears throat> For this kind of thing, Blender has really been my go-to. If I mm -hmm. want to do something a little more organic, I I did buy a copy of, um, I'm just going to close this down. I bought okay. a copy of ZBrush Core. Okay. Z ZBrush is a crazy expensive modeling program for professionals that, I don't know what it goes for now. It's probably, you know, a thousand dollars or something. Mm -hmm. But they, but they came out with this simplified version that just had the basic tools, which is all I wanted for about a hundred and thirty dollars or something. Um, yeah. and it was a and it was a perpetual license. So you just pay for it once and then you can use it. Um, and ZBrush is for sculpting. So oh I've heard of this. Okay, yes. So if I wanted to sculpt, we'll see. We'll see if it'll it'll run at the same time that I'm streaming. I'm okay. not sure. But well, if I wanted to sculpt a creature of some sort, and I'm just I'm just learning how to use it now. Um, sure. So I'm not particularly skilled with it. But this is the one that you can you can just it's like you're playing with digital clay, right? What? Yeah, it's, you just get this ball of clay, and then you can just play with it, and you can, you can, um, you know, grab. Hang on, draw size. Increase the jaw size. You can like change the shape of that, stretch it out, give him a big long nose. Oh, this you know. is how you made your little um, mump, right? Uh, I started with this, yeah, and uh, and actually, I have a I have a figure I did that that. Um, I think I've got it posted on my art station because it's uh, it's uh, 13 plus. It's a ball jointed doll mm -hmm. of um, of a what do you call them like a fawn, like a like a, a woman with like the legs of a of a deer uh, kind of thing, and and she has uh, you know deer horns and that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for ball jointed dolls, you generally make them anatomically correct, so I don't show that. <laughs> 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 but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's remarkable what you can do with it. Now this requires, I think, a little more powerful computer to run it well, because mm -hmm. you, you get into millions and millions and millions of of uh, polygons. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's just fun to play with. I, you know, all this stuff I just kind of play around with, and uh, I'm not like I say, I'm not an expert in any of it. But it's kind and of you, fun to play with. That was the $130 version yeah. of ASICS. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that was the the hundred and I think it was $130. Um and that that's I think Canadian dollars, so it might be less in the US. Okay. Um so I mean for, for that price, I thought that's reasonable. If I can get this and I can use it for three or four years without having to pay anything else. That's worth it to me as a hobbyist. Absolutely. You know? um, but yeah, I'm not going to pay a hundred dollars a month for something that I might not even use for that month. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yep. Well, and it's neat because you know I, I'm thinking of like, um, so you have Blender, and you like, for instance, if I wanted to draw a dragon, you know, I'm sure I could find like someone that made a dragon mm -hmm. anywhere and load it up and draw over it. But if I wanted to model my own dragon, I wonder if that would be a good opportunity to use ZBrush, create my own model or whatever. And it's, I'm guessing I'd be able to easily import it into something like Blender and then be able to mm -hmm. pose and whatnot. So, 
Yeah, you can, if you take the time to learn the tools, they are incredibly powerful, but you do need to put some, some time and effort into learning how to use them effectively. Yes. But I mean, even with just Blender for free, like you could model the structure of the dragon in a very simple way to get your angles and positions and, and something that you could move around and pose without it having all the details on it. And then you draw the details onto it. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's and, true. And that makes it, and that's kind of what I did with that room is like, I didn't put all the detail into it. I just wanted the basic structure that I could then use as a reference to draw from. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as comic artists, we have, I feel like a little more liberty with certain, um, with our drawing. I mean, depending on the style, but we're not trying to achieve absolute realism here. So oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of, you know, takes takes a bit of burden off, but that's really cool. Um, I didn't realize that Blender was free, so I will I have to check that out. I know it's one of those things that's like, oh, I got to learn to use, but you know, when, <laughs> when you need it and you know how to use it, it can be a big, big time saver. Yeah, and, and I'll be honest with, with Blender, and even, you know, talking about just open source kind of stuff in general, I find, like, if I open up Blender and I don't know how to do something, if I just fire up Google, mm. you'll find three or four <laughs> postings somewhere that'll tell you how to do it. Like, you can find the information pretty quickly. Yeah. Because there's a huge community of users who are all sharing information. So. Yep. No, I was for a while. I was using Easy Paint Tool Sci, and I did like it. Um, I actually, the reason I stopped using it was because um, it no longer played nicely with the new Windows update. Mm -hmm. But the other reason is that there wasn't as big of a community behind it, so trying to find answers to problems just couldn't very easily. So it it is nice when you have something a program that does have a community of people that are have been there or a question has been posted or that there is some sort of support for it oh yeah and, and blender has been around like i say for i think at least 15 years it's been around <laughs> and they've had devoted followers and users the whole time so there's a lot of really skilled people out there that are sharing their knowledge for free you know that's awesome. Well, yeah, thank you. I'll check that out. Sure. All right. Are you working on some comics today? I am. Well, I'm, I, I started this scene and uh, I, I realized as I got into it that where those figures are, I wanted to I wanted to make a bit of a change. And I don't know here, I'll show you what I was working on. So in my original page where I first introduced the sort of lizard species, they were kind of based on crocodiles. They had that sort mm -hmm. of shape to their heads. Mm -hmm. But I want to have different um, classes within the society and for the more sciencey lizards I want to base them on the um, iguanas oh cool I, I just I like the look of the iguanas and and I think like this is a little more rendered than I will do in the comic but yeah. I think I think those those big sort of lumpy parts on their necks are easy enough for me to reproduce Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have to get into all the texture of the skin, mm -hmm. but I tell you, it's tricky to find reference of iguanas where they're not sort of completely side on. Like I need to, I need to uh, figure really? out how to how to draw this from many different angles. So I need to get a real good feel for the shape of the head. Huh. And uh, so I'm kind of pulling up some references now, trying to figure out what they look like from many many different angles. <laughs> Isn't that is that always something you have yeah. something that's like okay, gotta find the reference for all these angles from above. It's always like yeah. either looking up or down. It seems to be the most challenging. But yeah, you know. so I've got I've got uh, 
I mean, I got some close-ups of their eyes, but I mean, a lot of them are these side-on kind of shots. Mm -hmm. When you look up different ones, they're always kind of right from the side. That's the most interesting angle to look at them from, but from a comic book perspective, I need more than that. And I found this one, which I thought was really cool. I, I didn't know they came in blue. Now, is that... I, I'm, I see that, but I'm wondering, is it Photoshop? No, that's a real lizard. I've seen lots and lots of pictures of them. I think that they may be a little bit endangered, but it's, yeah, they do come in blue, which I never knew. Wow. <laughs> which kind of opens up some possibilities for me in my, in my storyline. I'm like, I could make, I could make all different kinds of colors. Why not? <laughs> Or maybe like some of the more like unique or special higher higher up lizards are kind of those gatorade gatorade colors. Yes, yeah. I think, <laughs> gatorade that'd kind of, I think that'd be kind of cool. And it would also make it easier for me to differentiate one lizard character from another, you know, yeah. if they yeah. have different colors. So yeah, I'm gonna play around with that a little bit. And yeah. So I think I think what I'm gonna have to do is just set the set the page aside for a minute and just work on the the character okay and and play you around with screen on you or do you want the not the pressure of <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i can dip it on mine again put it on yours for a minute and while i while uh, i sort out what i'm doing you bring, i know it's like when you're like it's <laughs> on me uh i suddenly i can't think it's so gonna be really ugly to start with <laughs> yeah no you feel free brainstorm away i'm <laughs> I kind of decide that I have something I can work on that doesn't always require brain power. I've sort of, <clears throat> sort of uh, scheduled that into the live stream being like, if I can't think and talk at the same time very well, at least I can work on this piece that doesn't require a lot of brain power. So yeah. there you go. Anyways, I'll let you focus. I don't want to, I want to make sure you get some work done. Okay. Not a problem. Yeah, I feel bad sometimes that I'm pulling you away from your work because it's fun chatting though. I, yeah. I do love it. Okay. Where am I in all of my layers? Ain't that always a question? Just responding to a couple of comments in the chat there. All right. Oh my goodness, there's been a conversation. Sorry, guys. Someone says they're using open tunes for animation, which I've I've heard of. I haven't actually tried it myself. I think I, tr I think I did try it, but because of the particular monitor, the drawing monitor I use, it didn't work well together, which was okay. a shame because it's an open source. Uh, 2D animation software that's quite good from what I hear. Mm -hmm. Open was, Tunes? Yeah, Open Tunes. Tobias said that he, that he was using that. Oh. So many. My goodness. He also says he thinks he's seen a weird purple colored iguana somewhere. So I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> the color royalty. Right. Mm. <laughs> That's funny you say that. My grandfather used to say that all the time. That was his favorite color. And he'd say it's the color of royalty, yes. Because um, back in like ancient times, it was a very difficult color to produce. Mm -hmm. It came from the shells of the whelk, I think. It's a type of clam. Okay. And they had to crush them to produce the dye and it was very labor intensive and it took a lot of them so that's why we see purple robes and that was kind of known as wealth and opulence opulence interesting yeah. mm -hmm. there you go king lizard <laughs> king lizard well there is going to be a king so <clears throat> maybe oh, be purple. there you go <laughs> i'll make them whatever color makes most sense but uh, now you now you have a bit of information. I like I like purple. You, you know what's interesting is I'm finding this little mini comic is so saturated in purples and pinks, and pink is definitely not my favorite color, but I'm using it a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, it works well for space and for whatever it works well for Stella. So mm -hmm. oh, there we go. Come on. Oh come 
한번 보여드릴게요. 한 I'm, I'm one of those people that I kind of uh, I need to have multiple little projects on the go at a time because I often I get going on something and then I feel like I kind of hit a brick wall where mm -hmm. my brain is saturated on this particular topic so I need to switch to something else. So mm -hmm. that's why I play around with the sculpting and the music and the you know doing different scenes. I even actually started making um, little animated gifs um, of the little cute character that I have. And I figure I'll just do a bunch of them just for fun and fun. A uh, cute character. You mean the uh, mump? Yeah, yeah, the little mump character that my daughter created like three or four years ago. This is, I think, this project has been the most I've really uh, stuck with and actually stayed focused on. Maybe it's just because I, t I like. I feel like a bulldog. I have my teeth sunk into it. I want to finish it. At least, at least get through this comic. This little uh, thirty-page comic. I just want to get to the main thing now. There is something to be said for that. Having have that that persistence, you know, sticking with it and getting something done, you know. Yeah. And maybe it's because for the last ten years, I've really enjoyed being able to dabble in a bunch of different projects and try different things and try watercolors, try oils, and make a bunch of different things. And finally, I'm, I'm ready to just um, if make a sense of, have a sense of completion on a big project mm -hmm. that's been in my head for a while now, so. Yeah, that's kind of where I am too. I, I, I've started so many things and never really finished them. And I'm like, I, I want this to be a complete thing, a complete yeah. project yeah. that I, that I Ideally, that I can hold in my hand. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I agree. It's something you know. I mean, I I couldn't just do full digital. I I really appreciate the book. Oh, for sure. Yes. You know, I love that. There is something tactile and wonderful about uh, having a book in the hand. Mm hmm. Make it a little faster. I grab a couple more references here. Oddly enough, the best references I could find for the iguana was a guy that did an amazing 3D model of it because he showed it off in every direction. <laughs> Say that. I'm sorry. Say it one more time. No, the best references I'm finding are from some guy on ArtStation that did a 3D model of one. Oh, nice! And then he he was of course he's trying to show off his modeling skills, so he he photographed it from every direction, and that's exactly what I need. Thank you. You have no <laughs> idea how much you've helped me. Oh, I love when you find stuff like that. Yeah, that's it's his so name. Here, see what have it. Is. Here, I'll, I'll bring it over just a second. I want to see this. I'll, I'll, on your screen. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, I can't, I can't see. Yeah, I can't see you while I'm doing this, but mm. yeah, it's a room. It. It's a room. Yeah, you, know, you can't spin. You, it's just pictures, but you can't spin around yourself. Well, no, but he has this where he shows oh. all the all the different angles of it, which which is what I need. I needed to see that straight on front angle, and I needed to see sort of. From the back, when you look at the top of the head, you know, what's that shape? What's how does that work? You know, yeah, and uh, and even even the um, the three quarter view here gives me a better sense of sort of the the volume around that pouch under the under the jaw, yeah, but, uh, yeah. and the uh, way that it's facing away the three quarter view right above it, yeah. Cause, Cause that's an angle that I will likely want to be able to draw multiple times where I'm yes. looking over the shoulder of the character, that very first scene, I want to look over his shoulder at the, uh, at the main character. So just thinking that it's, it's so helpful to have something like this that you can look at as a reference. Oh, look at that. Yeah. He's just oh. showing, showing the different parts of the model and, and, and what he did to create it. 
That's, oh, I love people are so detail oriented. It makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, you elf, man, you elf.com. Yeah. Wow. That's a, he's, he seems to be a very skilled sculptor. Wow. 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 That's cool. Man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's broken down even more. Yeah. It looks like a map of the States on it. <laughs> By like county and region. Yeah. <laughs> Oh look at look look at the detail in the skin, you know. He's put he's put a lot of effort into that. You know, I can feel my laptop smoking just looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting hotter and about to blow up. Yeah. Wow. You gotta have a powerful computer for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know. I don't think mine. I mean, I've got a I built this one a couple of years ago and it was a, it's a six core computer. Um mm -hmm. Um, uh, with an AMD processor, but I don't think my computer could even handle doing that kind of detail. No. And, and you know, I think a lot of people don't even really appreciate how much goes into something like this. I mean, it's it's a little lizard, but the detail that's in it is remarkable. Right. Yeah. That reminds me of the lizards we have um, on our patio. Since we're in Florida, we have a ton of little, um, I think they're called enole lizards. Okay. They're, uh, so it's, I mean, they, they kind of have a little bit of a, that iguana look to them and they have little neck ridge and I you see them every day. Mm -hmm. So it's, but yeah, they're, that's cool. I love it when you find exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. I, I find a lot of times I, I search and search and search and I never quite find what I'm looking for. But um, yeah, when you find something like that, it's like yes, that gives me so many ideas and, and so much material I can work with. Yes, and also it's fun whenever um, you know you're looking for reference and you come across some stock photos and it has a watermark on it. But I kind of chuckle because I'm like, I don't need to use this for anything. I just need to look at it. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah I can still use it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm not stealing your work. I'm just oh, using it to, 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 you know, stir my imagination, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only thing that is free these days. Yeah. Free looks. You can look at it. <laughs> I was looking at the comments. Um, Tobias said, I wish I can arch better. I feel I'm more of a painter than a lion artist. Interesting. It's 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 a different way of thinking and and creating, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, like Zach, like the stuff that Zach does. It's a much more painterly style, and and uh, he just it's, he doesn't think in lines. <laughs> no, he thinks in values. I think it, you're right. It's a way of a different way of thinking. Um, mm. A lot of the realistic style painters I've learned from are, yeah, they think more in value and um, yeah, it's just a really different way of thinking. And, and I think line art tends to emphasize shape and silhouette. Mm -hmm. first. Um, and neither, neither style necessarily disregards the other because you need to have value and you need to have shape and silhouette but um, it's kind of a different way of how you're wired. And oof, I don't know, working in value was, or trying to think more in terms of value has been a struggle for me. And it's taken, it's, I feel like I've been on a journey in the last several years, um, just trying to think in those terms better. And um, that's why these days, let's see if I'll, I can show it on my screen. Oh, I don't have it here yet. I'm going to pop it in here. I will often, oh, hold on a second. Here we go. I will do this thing where I will put black on top of my, um, on my page. I'll transition to color. So now I have it just in black and white. Okay. And better see where the values are because um, as I am learning more, it really is about value that, um, makes a really good, compelling image apart from shape. Color really 
helps and deaf color definitely um, can pull your eye, but mm -hmm. I'm learning that having the correct value and the correct attention on um, different value is. Yeah. I mean, even in the black and white, it, it your eye is drawn where you need it to be, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's and it's interesting. Out. It's interesting. And I'm not, not as much in this page, but in other pages, how it changes so much when um, I, I'm working in color and I have all my color and I throw it in black and white. And sometimes it's like, Ooh, I can't make it better in black and white. And I sort of, there's just this nice clean, cleanness to it. So. Mm -hmm. But my heart also loves color too. So I can't do that. <laughs> I find that, well, I mean, I talked a little bit last time about, you know, my difficulties with, clutter and and focusing my attention where it needs to be mm -hmm. and how until i add that shadow i i can't really capture that sense of volume yeah and uh and sometimes i find like when i do the line art i need to add some color in there to differentiate things so that i can see how they fit together you yeah. know because just having a page full of black lines with a white background to me is is chaos <laughs> <laughs> I need, um, I need some shading or some color or something to, to differentiate things. Yeah, that's true. Oh man. But yeah, you can you're right with with what you're doing with the you know flipping it to black and white when you've got those values in there certainly shows mm -hmm. you what's standing out and what's not. Mm -hmm. I think it was really neat. One of the more interesting lessons I've ever received. Um, and, and by the way, if you need, you know, keep working, I'm just kind of chatting, but I want to make sure I'm not detracting it from your no, work. No, no problem. But um, I was um, working with an artist, if some of you know, his name is Ben Dos Santos, and he's a really amazing uh, realistic painter. Okay. He's done a lot of like fantasy outlook covers. And he had this class, like a mentorship, intensive focus on light and value and color and all that. And it was challenging to the, basically it was a good challenge to paint. You, you kind of had to draw paint. Um, how am I trying to say? You, you drew by painting. So, and you were really painting the light and the value in the shadow rather than like drawing your lines on something. Okay. And, oh, I just remember it was so challenging. It's like, I just need to draw my lines and my shape first. And <laughs> it, such, it felt like such a different way of thinking. And yet it was still like in the realm of art. So it, it blew my mind. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a totally different, I can see how some people gravitate toward one direction and the other. Um, let me check out the comments. Yeah, I know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people I look up online that are like um, character designers for video games and things like that. And a lot of them work in a more painterly style to do their concepts, you know. And they start out just with defining planes and masses and volumes, and then they they build it up almost like a sculpture. And, yes. Uh, and I was actually just reading that in the comments right now, and Tobias and Maria are saying, talking about painting like you're sculpting. Yeah. And that was, it is fun to hear you say that. And then it's fun to hear them say that. And then recalling uh, another art mentor that talked about, he was uh, referring to oil painting, but he was basically saying, um, you're using the paint like you're pushing and pulling it like you're, like you're sculpting. Mm -hmm. and, that that little bit of information was um, extraordinarily helpful and sort of groundbreaking when it came to oil painting for me, and then and just employing a general uh, painterly style. It's yeah. so you're more like you are sculpting something, like you're pushing the paint over. And um, it was, I mean, it's nice to be able to try with oil paints because you physically were pushing the paint over. Mm -hmm. but, um, but then it worked in digital too. It's kind of like, oh, if I need to paint something, I, yeah, it's just a great way of thinking of it. So it's a, yeah. well, it's funny how, 
how much thinking goes into these things, whether you're conscious of it or not. Mm -hmm. Like when I was younger and I used to do a lot of drawing, I was always drawing from a physical reference. I didn't do cartoons. Like I didn't do comic mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do like por portraiture and I used to draw still life and things like that. And I became quite good at reproducing what I was looking at. Yes. Because you're just what's right there in front of you. Yeah, it's right there in front of you. And, and, you, and your brain sort of switches so that you're just seeing it as a, a grouping of abstract shapes. Yes. And, and you're just sort of reproducing those abstract shapes. And you can become quite good at that, but you still don't really have, like, for the human figure, you don't necessarily have an understanding of mm. the 3D structure of a human figure, which is what you need mm. to do comic art. You, you, you need to be able to conceptualize that 3D structure in space because mm -hmm. you don't have a reference anymore. <laughs> yeah. Or at least you you can employ more of a realistic reference where you are shooting reference and doing more of a highly realistic style, but you're also doing a lot more pages. So I think that's yeah. one reasons we have you know, sort of this shorthand version of um, rendering these characters that can be done in a way that's faster. Yeah. As I speak, and it's taking me like over a year to get like this 30 page <laughs> done. So don't listen to me, folks. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, I, I've been working on this one for more than a year, so. <laughs> I know, I'm hoping it's just like, just because this is the first one, I'm still figuring out, but I don't know if it's just like, the fear of like, I don't have a lot of time left or, you know, it's like, I just got to get this done now. <laughs> so whenever I do my main graphic, I'll like kind of just have to. Well, you know, in situations like this, a little anxiety is a good thing. It gives you No one's really telling you what to, I got to get this done in time. And so it, it's kind of nice. And it's also kind of, not making it get done fast enough. <laughs> oh well. But I am I also am I realize okay, I get it. It's a learning curve and I want to make something that I am happy with and I do enjoy. And mm -hmm. I think that's my primary goal is like, am I enjoying it? Okay, yeah. sure. If I am and it just takes cool. a little more time, then I will have, I then would have to accept that it's just gonna take a little more time. Exactly. That, but I'm I'm happy with what I'm making. And I think that's, yeah. as long as that's the case, I'm, I'm and, you're, and you're still kind of in that experimental phase. I mean, it seems like looking at what you're doing now, it seems like you've kind of solidified the look you want, mm -hmm. but it's probably taken you a while to get there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, it has. And keeping it there too. Yeah. Because it's, it's easy to, you're not practicing regularly. It's I have to relearn a little bit, but it comes back. Yeah. I just haven't been drawing a lot, so it's very interesting to me. When I've, um, I think, yeah, last week when I was doing that little drawing for the live stream, it was suddenly like in the beginning, it was kind of like, okay, what am I doing again? <laughs> How, do I do? <laughs> How did that turn out? Were you happy with it in the end? I was. It it was. Um, I did it a lot faster than I normally done those things, um, and let me. I'll just quickly pull it up because I have it on my desktop. Because I'm trying to remember, like, what did it look like again? Here we go. Yeah. So I never actually got around to coloring it or anything, but and I was going to post it for the Fourth of July and. But I kind of ran out of time, and I was like, you know what? If my heart's not in it right now, I'm not going to force it. So yeah. Maybe we'll it for next year. But it was good practice to be able to draw them again. Oh yeah. Do something fun. And realize how much I don't. I just like drawing lines on a flag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Though, like you say, you can stick it in your back pocket, save it for uh -huh. next year. You know, yeah. next year you might have a Kickstarter on the go, and you can use that as an incentive or something. Exactly. Nothing is lost here. I can always, you know, I, it's so true. Yeah. Nothing is lost. Um, no, I, I totally agree. Okay, I was going to say something, but 
Yeah, no, I agree with that. All right, I had. Oh, how did I do? You know what? I'm just going to merge all these together. Oops, nope, that didn't work. Oh, did that? That's all I wanted. Sure. Oh, we're going to do. There it is. Oh, look who's here. Ah. You made it. What's up? Hello, hello. How are you? Hello. Great, thank you. How was your Fourth of Jelly weekend? Fourth of Jelly? <laughs> Fourth of Jelly. It was mediocre at best. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> That's right. You said you were working or you were going to work. I mean, yeah, we didn't really do anything, you know. I, I feel like most holidays are like that, you know, for... Mm -hmm. Because my kid's not old enough to care about any of it, right? Mm -hmm. All days are the same to him. As long as there's some sort of banana involved in his life, he doesn't really care. <laughs> I and mean, who, who does care if there's bananas? No, nah, like, yeah, he was, he, that's his favorite food right now. And he's just like, whatever, man. You know? <laughs> and <laughs> what the heck was I saying? I got lost in my... <laughs> but, uh... But yeah, so like he doesn't he doesn't care, and then my uh, you know my wife and I are just so busy, and we don't like have that sort of holiday spirit. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Totally, it makes sense. It's just my husband and I here right now, and we we were um, I was just telling Craig and the others that we just had a nice simple fourth of july we watched the clone wars movie and we made hamburgers but nice, it's just nice. fun to do that and um normally we would go and get fireworks but we don't really have um at the time he was still going through his quarantine process because he just got back from deployment and so it's just something that they all had to do so it's not like we could hang out with anyone anyways and so i was like yeah. <laughs> nice and easy relaxing it was fun so I, I get that. And it's more fun when you, like, if you do a celebration, it, you'd rather be with people anyways. Right. I think watching uh, fireworks is really only fun when you have, you know, mm -hmm. somebody to do it with. And it's not like I don't have my wife. I just... But it's fun I, said, I said it before. In St. Louis... You just walk outside and everyone's doing it in the alleyways and stuff. Yeah. So like I could like look in any direction and see somebody shooting off fireworks from from their alley. And and I'm not talking small stuff either. Like big scary crap. And I'm like, I don't I don't know. It, it almost makes you not want to go outside. So <laughs> right? you're like, it that's fun. And then you leave because you're scared to die. And that's <laughs> I'm going in my house now. Please don't burn it down. Right. Yeah, we realized a little too late that our car was still outside, and we we're like, Ugh. but it it's fine. All right. So, what are you working on today? Uh, I was finishing up some a uh, uh, job I was hired for a while ago. Um, here, I could show you my the thing I like that I've done. I was going to give you a moment to kind of get ready before I threw your screen. Oh, uh, whatever. I, I jumped I jumped in ready, so you can throw my yeah. screen if you really want cool. to. But. Oh, yeah. So oh. that's okay. that, right? Look at that. I, I, I'm pretty happy with this. All things considered, it turned out great. I mean... Uh, like, so it's it's a story about uh, this superhero team that's made up of like uh, what do you call it? Um, 
Ugh, disabled kids. Oh, right on. So, I... Yeah, I had to go through. So there's the blind kid and kid with uh, kid in a wheelchair, um, mm -hmm. girl with prosthetic legs. It's hard hard to do stuff like that without like making them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, this that I almost I'm scared to say this could just because I don't want to come across in the wrong way. But but mm -hmm. we have such a standard for what what beauty is, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to make something that tech is technically fitting to that standard, but then mm -hmm. also is saying that standard is wrong and we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'm making any sense. But. No, I get what you're saying. But focusing on giving it like, the dignity that it is and yeah. giving character is that dignity. Well, right. And that's the thing, right? It's like, I'm trying not to change them from, from what they are and what they should be, you know, like, yeah. I don't want to be like their disabilities are meaningless. You know, I think that was, I really like what this author has done. Cause he's not gotten rid of them. Really? The disabilities, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the powers that they get are, are almost ancillary to the, to the disabilities. They don't get rid of them. They just allow these people to feel, I don't, I don't know. It's like, it's like, uh, Daredevil's not a perfect example, but like he doesn't ever really get his sight back. Yeah. He just has these sort of things that, that, you know, that help him to live his life in a more extraordinary way, but still can't like, Mm -hmm. experience color and you know movies and things like that right and there's a lot of that here it's like well it's kind of that phrase differently abled you know the, their their, yeah, experience, yeah. their experience may be different than ours that doesn't make it less nope. right and and i it, it's it's a it's a hard place to live in as an artist just because i don't want to be disrespectful to to them, but I also want to push it to be accessible to other people mm -hmm. who maybe don't have the, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know the right way to say this, but I want people who don't, I mean, I don't know when you're <laughs> Craig, this is, <laughs> this is the only way I could think of it. And, and I don't, I don't know. I always feel weird talking about Christianity mm -hmm. and stuff around you, but, oh, uh, but like when you're, when you're doing something as a Christian and you're, you're building some sort of, I don't know, story or something like you, you want to bring people in who don't believe and, and hopefully show them the, the brighter side of it and not, not like, not alienate them, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm, I'm kind of what you're doing here. I'm hoping anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Try, trying to, when you have a situation like that, like kids that have disabilities that, that don't fit the, like you say, the mold of beauty that mm -hmm. our society has established, but mm -hmm. trying to help people to see the beauty in them. Right, which right, goes, exactly. Which goes beyond that superficial. That's, that's, that's a big challenge, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it is frustrating because they're not ugly or, I don't know, like that. This is where I feel like I'm, I'm like stuttering a lot right now because it's. I want to be so careful and not say something that sounds. Yeah. Well, that that's just not what I believe, right? Because like, I could say I want to make them. I want to make sure that they're beautiful, but that's mm -hmm. hard. It's like if I say that, that makes it sound like they're not beautiful. When of course, what I mean is we've built this idea of beauty. Mm -hmm. you're you're reconstructing that idea of what beautiful is right and, and that's that's deep ground to to delve into you know and i think part of that that beauty and i love using the term beauty not in the sense of just um a cultural definition of um aesthetic but 
I almost like to define beauty as seeing the good in things. And yeah. in a sense, um, you really, it's, it's just the creativity and the, the problem solving and using new creative solutions around um, obstacles. And yeah. I think that is attractive and beautiful. Yeah and different and engaging. Well, I tell you that honestly, the, the, I mean, I spent the last eight years just working exclusively with, with uh, preschool age 